now move to topical questions to the Minister. Uh, Michael McGimsey is not in his place. <coughs> Stephen Mutry is not in his place. And I call Michelle McElveen. Ms McElveen. Who is in her place? Um, thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, the, the Minister will be aware that the committee recently visited the University of Ulster Jordanstown. And can I ask her whether she has any, had any discussions with the university, and in particular the Ulster Sports Academy, about their exciting vision for a sports hub at the campus? Um, I thank the member for her question. I have plans to meet the Sports Institute early in the new year. Uh, I know officials have had meetings with Sport NI in relation to ongoing support. The member and other members of Cal Company will be aware that I made a substantial investment uh, into the Sports Institute, but I think we need to look at future proofing a long-term usage of sports facilities. I thank the Minister for her answer, but would she be supportive of exploring the creation of centres of sporting excellence at Jordanstown, um, for example, a neutral, neutral venue for a boxing academy and indeed an indoor velodrome? Um, well, certainly um, I'm happy to meet with the Sports Institute to look to see what future. I don't want to commit myself to anything in particular. I, I am, the velodrome is one of the issues that is on the agenda for discussion. Uh, particularly because since the last appraisal was done, the, I suppose the, the demand and certainly the, the, the users involved in um, bicycles and racing and competitive racing has increased tenfold. So certainly I'm happy to talk to the Institute about the velodrome. I hadn't any plans to talk to the Institute about boxing, but I've no, no reason why I wouldn't. Hello. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, given the growth in interest of cycling, and the importance of the um, Tour of North International Cycle Race uh, to, to the cycling fraternity. Will the Minister's Department be willing or able to support the 40,000 funding required to run this in yeah. April 2014? Um, well, I'm currently meeting uh, members, not only, I'm meeting members who are representing all the governing bodies to look at gaps in certain funds, particularly around events. I don't want to commit myself to saying, yes, uh, I will be funding the gap, um, but certainly happy to look at it because what we need to do is we all need to play our part in making sure that events should be primarily sporting events, cultural events, tourist events, that we make sure that there are no gaps. And first of all, make sure that there are no gaps that prevent the, the event happening in the first place. So I'm happy to um, take details of the member to bring it forward. But there are certainly, in relation to cycling and competitive cycling, and racing, there are a number of proposals that have been brought to my attention recently. I'm not too sure if they're the same ones or different ones, and I need to look at them all in the round. But I'm certainly happy to look at plug-in holes and gaps, particularly when, given the year of the Giro coming here, we need to try and be very, very proactive in making sure that all opportunities, uh, all, all, all communities uh, who don't, won't experience the Giro get an opportunity to experience something similar. And I love. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted uh, by the answer from the Minister, and I hope she will meet uh, with the group fairly soon, because you know, time's running on. And, and would the Minister uh, agree that this would be almost a, a, a first step, and particularly will help all the organisers and the PSNI in preparing for the, um, can't say it properly, Gero uh, d'Italia uh, in coming years? Um, well, just to share with the member, the PSNI, um, in conjunction with the Tourist Board and um, the governing bodies, have been meeting regularly around plans for this. It's not like, you know, we know it's common, but we haven't done anything about it. That is not the case. The, the groups that have asked to meet me about funding gaps, I'm not too sure if it's funding gaps within their group, or funding gaps around this event, or other events, or just funding gaps in terms of the sport itself. But what I will give the member a commitment I have asked to meet the governing bodies and I've already agreed to meet a couple of cycling clubs to see what we can do. I'm taking a calm do attitude if I've got the money and I've got the support of executive colleagues, particularly in terms of events that we all are keen to support, we'll certainly be proactive and we'll do what we can. We're all taking a calm do attitude. Mr. Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can the Minister give a rough estimate of how many people viewed the recent successful Brighter Gold, uh, Brighter Horde exhibition in Limavady. The beautiful Broider Horde in the members' constituency. Um, I've no idea, and there are still people I've heard from Belfast who come up tomorrow evening. Must be some event on tomorrow evening, but they're going up anyway, which is good because Belfast people don't travel very well. 
Um, and I do think it's very, very good, particularly when I heard about children and young people from schools going to see the Broider Hoard. I think the original expectations will be really succeed, exceeded. And I'm hoping to hear the final figures. I think for people who haven't been to Limavada yet to see the Broider Hoard, they should go. It's a rare treat. Uh, and I'm glad to see the Broider come back to where it belongs. Mr. Speaker, I thank uh, the Minister for her answer. And the supplementary would be, would the Minister give consideration to supporting a permanent display of the Broider Hoard in Limavady, the borough in which it was found, even if some of the pieces would have to be replicas? I certainly would, and I'd be certainly keen to have discussions with the museums uh, and certainly with the people who are procuring it at the minute. But certainly I, I believe passionately that it should come back to where it was found and where it belongs. And not even that, I believe, in that area where there has not been many opportunities, particularly around tourism, presented to it over decades, that the broader gold hoard is one opportunity we can't afford not to fight for. Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, is the Minister satisfied that all the various traditions in London die have been properly promoted and, re and represented during the city's year as UK City of Culture? Um, I would be, but there are always com complaints perhaps, and concerns at times where I always felt that maybe they were passed by. But certainly, I have met many groups, and not just the big ticket events, but many groups within the community, who are not only happy that they got involved this year, but certainly looking at how they can strengthen the work as part of the legacy from this year and beyond, and that is from across the community. Mr. Anderson. I thank the Minister for that answer, but can I ask the Minister what her department has done or is doing? Uh, for the annual apprentice by shutting of the gates pageant in the city of London Dairy on Saturday the 7th of December as a major uh, event, cultural event. Um, I am not aware of the department giving any specific support for that, um, but certainly, I mean, I was at events where the apprentice boys were dairy were there. They have been far, part of the uh, cultural programme. Uh, what, what I can do is check with officials to see um, whether any requests. Um, but certainly supportive. And I mean, as a woman living in North Belfast, I think there's many things that we can look towards the apprentice for by examples of what we need to do. Because up and down the road over this past year and even more, it almost becomes a tale of two cities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I know from oral questions that Mr. McGuinness had a question down to do with C.S. Lewis and the public commemorations. Um, I want to ask about the legacy. Um, can I ask the Minister how we can ensure that the legacy of this great writer um, can be used to encourage greater involvement in literature and the arts? Um, the, I thank the member for a question. And, um, the member may be aware that there was an adjournment debate brought forward by our par party colleague Sammy Douglas last week. It was unfortunate that an application in, I think it was to the Arts Council, missed the deadline for the C.S. Lewis Festival. However, we're working with the East Belfast Partnership and to try and make sure that there is a legacy around C.S. Lewis. And the bits of funding that have been used for the festival thus far haven't been huge, but they've been very, very effective. And I'm keen to make sure that C.S. Lewis isn't confined to the, the, the dust books of history, that we need to, he's a proud Belfast man, and we need to be proud of him and use whatever opportunities we can to celebrate his work uh, and to ensure that the legacy of his work is passed on from one generation to another and that we all know who he is. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the, the Minister for her answer. And just to follow on from that again, um, she had mentioned there about this passing on from one generation to the next. Can I ask her if she's had any, um, her, her department has had any talks with the Department of Education on the legacy of C.S. Lewis and how we can promote this in our schools to bring young people forward with literature and the arts? I haven't had any discussions with the Department of Education. I think it's a good idea. Uh, and given the, the, the literature um, that he's produced, and in, you know, given the fact that a lot of children now would be aware of the Narnia stories, that it would be a missed opportunity not to try and advance any opportunities we have across the executive. But certainly happy to talk to the Department of Education and see what we're doing around C.S. Lewis as it is. And it's maybe something that we can do better next year, because I do think there will be opportunities, rather than waiting to a big significant date, there are opportunities that we need to do in between to try and raise a, raise a profile of some of our cultural giants. Ron would the Minister agree with me that Owen Rua Hurland Club in Dungannon needs redeveloped, uh, given the increase in club membership? Uh, yes, I would. And the member, because she, she invited me down, um, would be aware that I, I had a visit. Uh, there were many, many children uh, crammed into a very, very small space. 
delighted they're, they're involved in sport, delighted that there's boys and girls uh, involved in sport together. Uh, but you know, we'd, we'd agree with the member that there is a need to look at uh, the development of facilities, and I'm happy, as I've indicated to other members, to have those meetings with her uh, and officials with sport and I to take it forward. Ron McGann. Gormiogat, my, my supplementary has been answered regarding a further invite with uh, the, the club, so I'd appreciate it if we could follow up on that. Thank you. I mean, I, I confirm that. I'm genuine about that, not only to the, the member of my own party, but to other members. I'm happy to facilitate a, a, a time that suits her, sport and I, and the club. Number nine, Dr. Alison MacDonald's not in his place. Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, has she any assessment about the shortage of provision, particularly for football uh, in Northern Ireland? But, sorry, facil- facilities, that is. Sorry, I, I didn't hear your last part. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, in particular, the facilities, the provision of facilities for football in Northern Ireland. Um, I thank the member for his question. I'm aware that some council areas have actually done uh, a, a needs analysis of the different levels of sport within each of the council areas. And some have, uh, like for example, in Coleraine, in Belfast, Derry, other places have produced a, a deficit, not just for football, um, hockey, and uh, I think some other track and field, but certainly across the board there's a lack of facilities. And some of the council groups are actually talking to officials within Sport NI to say about the and others, big lottery, to say about the potential of trying to bring forward. Uh, I suppose a collaborative approach to provision. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for her response to the question? Uh, and, give, and given her response to the previous question, in particular, on, on, on an individual club, can the Minister outline? I mean, in my own area in South Antrim and Antrim in particular, there is an under provision for football, as you have identified, and for hockey. Can the Minister indicate what her department could do to address that, given that these people who participate in the sport can go on to greater, bigger, and greater things? Um, well, I'm happy to meet with a member and representatives of Antrim and some of the governing bodies in the new year, if that's, that would help the member. Um, I mean, the last thing I want to see is some areas will provision by postcode. And I, I don't want to see that. There will never be enough money to try and meet the need, but there are certainly inventive ways that we can work towards trying to achieve the same ends if we look at different potential sources of funding. And I appreciate for some groups on the ground, at sometimes who's going to blink first? Do they get it from Decon Sport and I? Do they get it from the council? They don't really care as long as they get it. So I'm happy to do a meeting in the new year to see what we can take forward. Order, that concludes question time. We will now...